Civil War II in America. Is it possible? How real is the threat? With mobs committing violence and police and city resources not handling the problems, people are getting more and more scared. Panic buying of firearms and ammo has skyrocketed in the past few months, with record Nick's background checks being set every month. Do people believe there could be a second civil war? Do you believe there could be a second civil war? There's a Rasmussen report that says over 50% of Americans believe internal political violence is likely, and a Newsweek poll that shows one-third of Americans believe that a civil war can break out within the next five years. A Washington Examiner poll found that 7 out of 10 people believe that we are already two-thirds of the way towards a civil war. Many people believe that a second civil war is impossible because the left doesn't have guns. This is a myth. The recent riots have shown us that the left has guns. People have been threatened and shot at by people in these mobs. Having worked at an indoor gun range near Atlanta, I can personally tell you that many left supporters came in with their t-shirts on and their pistols and long guns to practice. Liberals do have guns. While many in the military wouldn't enforce a hard left government taking away the rights of people, many would initially obey orders, especially if the powers that be get to pick their commanders. Liberal governors can order the National Guard units, and there would be some time before large numerous groups of troops disobeyed those orders and sided with the Constitution and freedom. In addition, it would only take a few pilots, a few tank crews, a few units that are still defending a tyrannical government to cause civil war to last for a long while. Many police units currently enforce unconstitutional gun laws in states that have enacted strict gun control or red flag laws. If the police will enforce those things, a few of them, not all or most, but a few of them will probably be okay with taking away your other rights. In short, you cannot dismiss the possibility of a second American civil war based on the myths that liberals don't own guns, or the police and military won't enforce unconstitutional orders. The reality is that we'll still have a huge mess on our hands if just 10 or 20% of the police or military went along with oppressing the people. Don't forget that people have been killed by the police for not going along with unconstitutional red flag laws. Then there would also be the possibility of a foreign entity such as NATO or the UN coming into the war as a peacekeeping force. They would most likely side on the side of the oppressors, and they would be opposed to freedom of religion, speech, keep and bear arms, etc. If you still don't think this is a possibility, let me remind you of Jesus' words. A kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. Eventually, with the United States so polarized, we will have a second American Civil War. And let's pray that I'm wrong. Do we really want this? I certainly don't, and I don't advocate for one either. I don't want neighbor fighting neighbor. So how do we prevent it? How do we prevent the second civil war in America? Here are my five ideas. Please list your ideas for peaceful prevention of civil war in the comments. Number five, we absolutely have to get out more history, civics, and economic education. Our fundamental rights need to be taught and history needs to be taught. I find it ironic that the very people who call others Nazis agree with some of the Nazi policies and tactics. They were the National Socialist Party after all. More about our rights and where we came from has to be taught. Number four, we need a more accountable media. I believe in the freedom of the press. The press will always spin the story, though. But they outright lie about events or about politics, and it definitely goes beyond the bounds of responsibility. With recent successful lawsuits against major media groups, we need to emphasize the fact that the media is accountable to the people. Yes, the press should be free from the government. But when they lie, they should be held accountable by the courts or by ratings. I'd rather have the news bogged down in the courts than lying and spinning every story against one political candidate or another. Number three, term limits for Congress. We have had politicians of both parties for many years being corrupt. Studies show that over 70% of Americans want this, and this is a bipartisan issue. Number two, ending of the two-party system. This can be as simple as letting a third party in the debate or taking away the party affiliation in front of the candidate's name. People need to study the person they're voting for and not just the party in front of them. Many Republicans have voted for unconstitutional gun laws and many Democrats have let corporations get away scot-free with crimes. Most Americans 
would consider themselves somewhere in the middle between the right and the left, and it's time someone represented Americans, not the parties. Number one, balancing the budget and tackling the national debt. This is the number one most dangerous issue in America right now. The current national debt, according to usdebtclock.org, is $27.2 trillion at the time I wrote this script. Add in another $3.5 trillion in interest, and you have an astronomical amount. Literally, I've done the math. If you taped dollar bills end to end, you could take our national debt and stretch it around the orbit of Jupiter from Earth several times. <laughs> this will continue to lead to higher food, fuel, gold, medicine, etc. prices as the value of the dollar decays. To do this, we will have to have a modest increase in taxes, but a drastic decrease in spending. With the government still printing money with what they call quantitative easing, the value of the dollar will continue to fall and it will eventually tumble down a steep cliff. Yes, some people will be mad about their benefits being cut, but what about when the monetary system collapses altogether? They definitely won't get their benefits then either. This is America where you work hard and provide for yourself and your family. So those are my five ideas. Leave your ideas in the comments. Beyond these, peaceful separation is what I advocate. That is a longer video for another time. Godspeed to all, and we will see you at the range.